Hi, my name's Steve Faulkner and welcome to Real Magic Review, where I provide honest, unaffiliated reviews in order to address the issue of the horrific amount of money I've spent over the years. This week, we have Daniel Bryan and Dave Loosley's expansion. So before we crack on with the review, can you please like and subscribe if you haven't done yet, and please share if you can. Uh, and also, can you please go and have a little look at cardmagiccourse.com. That is my online card magic course from 2013 that I'm adding to weekly now, uh, adding new tricks to it and new courses, uh, drip feeding a course currently on how to practice. So cardmagiccourse.com. Incidentally, if you want a little sample of that course and you're an intermediate or advanced magician, uh, I've got a free spread cull tutorial, which I believe is the most powerful move in card magic. I use it obsessively all the time. Gets you out of trouble if you get lost in a trick and it's just brilliant. So uh, that's under cardmagiccourse.com forward slash cull, C-U-L-L, cardmagiccourse.com forward slash cull. So uh, let's get on with it. From an original idea by Daniel Bryan and adapted by Daniel and Dave Loosely, this is an Alakazam product. Uh, and it's been engineered by Rob Bromley. So it's a gimmick card that you're getting. And f years ago, I remember seeing Michael Close's uh, pothole trick and being quite fascinated with it. And for some reason, never really playing with it. Let's be honest, it was probably because I was lazy and I couldn't be asked to make the thing, but uh, which is th why this is quite handy. But this is, this is more of a stretching hole effect than a moving hole effect. And it's one of those things that happens on a playing card that hasn't really got much to do with a card trick, and what I mean by that is that it could be on any piece of card. The trick is that you stretch a hole, and that's not a problem. But over the years, it has been for me. And again, I caught myself because it's the magician in me, isn't it? I'm trying to put too much logic on this. And you know what I'm learning through doing these reviews is slowly that that logic, actually what I've learned by being a professional magician, is that that logic isn't really there for a spectator. And it doesn't have to make logical sense. And I spoke about this with the Omni deck. So I'm trying to get rid of rid of all that. And that's and these tricks come along at a decent time for me because I'm now trying to explore those tricks that sort of pepper your routines with almost punctuation, moments of odd. You know, they're not closers. They're not something you're going to do at the end, you know, after you've thrown the card at the ceiling. But it, it's something that I think in, enhances your magic. And there's a lot of stuff around like this. So it's quite an exciting time. So the effect that you get packaged with this, the routine is like a challenge routine. You, you punch a hole in a card uh, after they've signed it and you say, look, can you get a coin through there? And, and they obviously they can't because it's a hole. And then you, you visibly stretch the hole to get the coin in. And then, and then you, the, in the cool sort of flick, the hole sort of travels back to its original state. And then you give them the card out to examine. So again, quite quite cool, and and there's two moments of sort of whoa in this. There's the the, there's the the kind of expansion of the hole, and then there's expansion, and then there's the the flick that brings it back, which is a, a really important part of it. So first impressions is it's a well-made card gimmick. Rob Bromley does loads of stuff for Alakazam, so you you kind of get something that's been made by hand you know they didn't factory produce loads of these things and it feels quite hard it feels like it's going to last of course it's a gimmick card and they're a bit less tough than a gimmick coin so you're gonna have to look after it and i'm shocking for this you know at the end of a gig i just want to get home chuck everything in the bag and it's going to take a little bit of care uh, like i said i haven't had it for ages so i can't say it's going to last you years but it feels like it is it feels like it's a good solid bit of work and there's this nice challenge routine they give you it the challenge of putting a you know, trying to get a coin uh, through a card. So you punch a card and say, can you get a coin through there? And obviously they say no. Oh, well, you say, obviously. Um, of course, I haven't been doing this long, a bit of audience management. I had someone last night try and actually rip the card to get the coin in because I've just said, can you get the coin through there? And they were kind of like, right. And that's the danger with challenges. <laughs> You've got to give them a little bit of kind of put the coin through there, but don't destroy the card at the same time, maybe. But... So, but the routine's nice, and but I'm already thinking that there's more, you, you can do lots of other stuff, you can present this in lots of different ways. So, and I do, I do like the trick, you know, I like the fact that, you know, I, when I took it out last night, I said to people, you know, I'm, I'm going to show you something that, that's a bit different, um, let me know what you think, and I genuinely asked them, I said I'm doing a review of the trick, and I want your honest opinion after it, and I did the trick, and... And the, the opinion was, you know, that they really liked it. They, they thought it was really odd. A lot of people said it was quite eerie. It was quite really unexpected. And that's, again, really important, isn't it? There we go. You just... What? And you can put it through there. How the 
How does can, that work? If, 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 I think people almost think you're going to move the hole or something like that when you put your, your thumb over it and you do that movement. And when it stretches, you do see that moment of kind of, oh, right, surprise. And that's what we want, isn't it? We want that kind of totally unexpected thing. And then putting the coin through it is almost feels almost like a joke. It's like, yeah, you know, if you do it sort of nonchalantly, no, I've stretched it, I'll put the coin through it, and of course you can do it like that. And, and that's quite nice. So I think it is a really fun routine. Uh, it is a short routine, which for me is a good thing at the moment. I've started to realise that I'm kind of giving up on this quest to find a closer, you know, because I think there aren't many. There aren't many things that you can finish with that are big, and I always talk about card on ceiling, card in wallet, all those... Yeah, and then I'm thinking, I don't really, maybe I don't need anymore. Maybe I'm, this search for that is pointless. Maybe I should be looking for other things to, to, to create that punctuation through my magic and add more and more uh, moments of weird stuff that people gotta go, oh, and then you finish with the closer. So this is perfect for that. And obviously it's a gimmick card, so it's really easy to load on the top of a deck. All you need to do is load it on the deck. There's no other setup. So easy to do. And there is a caveat to that, which I'll talk about in a minute. Uh, something you'd be able to do quite quickly, and again, I'll talk about that in a minute. Maybe not as quickly as you might think, but that's okay. And a good fun routine and a well-made gimmick. Now, of course, every trick and every routine has its challenges. And the challenges for me with this were things that I'd expect. Uh, but, well, maybe not, actually, because when you first get something, if you have a feeling that you can go out and do it, it almost feels self-working, but it's not. And they'll share a few things with you because I took it out last night, sort of unperformed. You know, I'd done it once in the office uh, next door to someone and then I took it out to a gig and a couple of things happened which I was kind of dreading might happen and when they did, it's not really that bad. And that's a, a lesson here. So you've got this, the stretch of the coin, the first uh, stretch of the hole. The first thing is that you want to be kind of holding the cards as you do it because of the way you then give it out for, for um inspection afterwards all right so you don't want to be putting the cards down because then you've got to pick the cards up in order to do the thing in so you and and with my little porky fingers i was kind of i found the stretch in the hole and covering everything up as it should be quite hard when i was holding a deck and it just took a bit of practice and that's all i'm saying is to be be aware because it kind of feels like you can do it and then you might see that you're exposing something um and the other thing is this flick this flick where you're putting the you're sort of putting the hole back to its original state is uh, there's a few things that can happen there and that's the bit that took a bit of practice for me just to get that just solid every time and I thought I had it and last night I um I took it out and I, <laughs> I did the flick thing and my hands were a bit sweaty because it was a it was a hot it was really hot in there so I, I was kind of flicked it and it didn't sell so I flicked it really hard and it flew onto the floor now that's fine and that's not the end of the world you do lose that visual element but you've still done the trick and you can still pick it up and show them that the hole's back to normal but uh, I just went completely blank for a moment and I kind of flicked the thing and it went on the floor and I said to the, the guy, pass me that, and he, as he picked it up, he had a good look at it. Now, what he didn't see is the gimmick and how the gimmick worked or anything like that, but what he did see that it was a certain kind of card uh, that you get, which I, I won't give anything away, but it's not the gimmick, it's how the card's printed it. That's what I'll say. Uh, and he kind of saw that there's no way it could have been the original card when I gave it back. Now, saying that, I did manage to give him his card back without being detected. And he looked at it and went, oh, yeah, but that was a different card. And now, so it was still a trick and it was still good, but it wasn't as good. So there it is. It's another good one for me. And I'm feeling like a lot of these reviews are positive. And I don't want you thinking everything's going to be brilliant. But I suppose if someone sends me something, they're going to send me something that they believe in. And also, you know, I've just started this. I haven't really got anything yet that I can say, no, it's, it's not good. Now, there is stuff out there um, that is shocking. And if I do find something I think you'll know about, or if you find something I should know about, please do let me know. Because this isn't about saying everything's brilliant. It's also about finding things that I don't want you to waste your money on, like I have in the past. Um, but that's it. Thank you very much. Please do me a favor, like and subscribe, say it every time, really, really important. Go and see carbmagiccourse.com. But another thing is, uh, as I mentioned before, you've got a free spread cold tutorial. So if you are an intermediate or an advanced magician, that's straight from the course, and that is carbmagiccourse.com forward slash cull, C-U-L-L, carbmagiccourse.com forward slash cull. Uh, thank you very much. 
Have a great one. My name is Steve Faulkner and thank you so much for the people that have shared this. It makes all the difference because it's something you don't have to do. So the fact that you've taken time to share this on community and Facebook groups really makes a difference to me uh, because if we can get those views up and get more reviews. Thanks very much. Have a great day.